Hello everyone, this video is in the Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are going to look today at the game between Winter and Ruby Chess from the TCEC Swiss. And this features a wonderful attack in the Stonewall Dutch. Um, and uh, I think that uh, this game would be very useful to 1D4 players facing the Stonewall Dutch or black players looking to play these structures, which is a particular favourite of mine as well. Let's start. So knight f3, um, e6, d4, d5, g3, c6. Looks a bit like a Magnus Carlsen game, doesn't it? Uh, but this was all the TCC book. And uh, through a bit of a detour, we get to uh, a pretty standard Stonewall Dutch position. So white plays quite a common idea here. Uh, plays the knight to e1. This knight comes round to, uh, to d3. Um, and can support two things. I mean, either it's going to support an advance of the queenside pawns, as happens in the game, or this knight comes to d3, this knight comes to f3, and then we play bishop f4 and try and uh, exchange our way to controlling the e5 square. Uh, now, Ruby plays something quite interesting and something that I was always a little bit worried about doing, and that's to play um, b6. I like b6, but now bishop a6. In general, I only really wanted to put the bishop on a6 when I played a preliminary a5, because this bishop can be, uh, well, somewhat loose, somewhat weak, somewhat of a target, you know, to stuff like maybe a4 to a5. Um, and I was always a little bit nervous about it, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, Ruby makes a pretty good job of it. Um, so Winter played b4. Um, I mean, one of the nice things about this uh, bishop a6 at such an early stage is that, um, well, knight f3 isn't possible because the pawn on c4 is attacked. And, you know, if white played a move like, um, uh, like b3, then uh, I think black would continue just in the game rook c8 and then just try and play a quick c5. And um, yeah, I mean, this looks uh, this looks pretty decent for uh, for black. So Winter played uh, b4, rook c8 and a4. I mean, really going for this big clamp. And uh, I mean, maybe looking to play b5 at some stage, maybe just looking to play a5. And, you know, uh, the attack on the bishop might even force black to play b5, after which this bishop would be pretty miserable. Um, Ruby replied with a very typical uh, Stonewall Dutch idea, knight e4. And uh, this is also threatening to play knight takes d2 and bishop takes c4 because the pawn on c4 is hanging. So we get, we're really coming to, um, um, well, a crucial point in the opening. So um, the pawn on c4 is attacked, so white clamps with, uh, with c5 and now bishop b8. And, and here white has to, uh, to think of a good plan. Um, now, I mean, I think the, the key thing that you've got to think of is how are you going to resolve the, the queen side structure? Um, now, first of all, um, with white, I mean, one of the key ideas is to take on b6 and then play a4 to a5. Um, you're trying to get rid of a pawn on b6 so that you've got the c5 square for, uh, for a knight. And, um, well, there was a game in the uh, English Open Championship by uh, the English Grandmaster Danny Gormally uh, against Lawrence Webb, which um, uh, sort of showed this, this sort of theme to, uh, to great effect, actually, you know, just... Uh, clearing the, uh, the dark squares and then establishing yourself on them. Um, so that's one idea. Uh, another idea would be to push b4 to b5, you know, and uh, embarrass this bishop on a6. Um, I think what that all says is that um, if black plays b takes c5, then I think that you really should be thinking about taking with the d pawn. Taking with the b pawn, uh, that really just, um, um, yeah, you know, blocks in your... Uh, uh, well, not blocks in, but it it um, it removes one of the big advantages of your structure. Um, and uh, after that, with a kind of static structure, yeah, it's not really easy to see where white's advantage should be. Um, you know, black in principle has got quite a lot of space on the king side and could easily increase it with g5 and h5. So I think white really needs a counterbalance against that. Um, now, when I played my, my games, you know, uh, my engine games, uh, uh, Stockfish did this quite nicely. I mean, Stockfish played knight b3. Uh, and after bc5 uh, played uh, d takes c5 um, and king h8 rook b1 uh, e5 f3 knight g5 and now f4 this uh, specific idea 
Um, and we got bishop takes d3, e takes d3, takes takes, which was a, a slight advantage for white. I mean, you've got the two bishops and uh, potentially, uh, you know, you could occupy and control uh, a lot of dark squares in the center. I mean, uh, Coy Visto managed to uh, keep this together for um, for black quite instructively, actually. He played uh, the rook over to f6, the knight over to g6, started getting some uh, um, a little bit of kingside attack and attacking this f4 pawn as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, White was definitely more comfortable in that position. Um, Leela 40b was uh, even looking for th this very sharp idea, b5 and knight b4, which again illustrates very well, yeah, you know, my nervousness about the bishop on a6. It can really become a target for, uh, for White's pieces. But somehow, um, yeah, I mean, this wasn't really... This wasn't really that clear. This was um, Leela's line. Then it's coming with bishop h3, bishop a3, rook c1. Reasonable amount of pressure, but um, you know I'm not sure whether it's uh, uh, going to be really better for um, for white. Um, but in any case, you know a plan like that, um, really looking to make use of the white um, uh, queenside advance, I think would be very good. Um, what um, Winter did, I think, was kind of abandoning any sort of advantage really you know uh, uh, b takes c5 b takes c5 i mean we have the b file but all the entry squares are covered i mean we can attack that knight on a6 with knight b4 but it's got squares like c4 it's also attacking the pawn on e2 you know you'll be doing very very well to actually catch it and if you can't catch it then it's actually a very good piece you know it's really cutting across the white position <coughs> pardon me and, and then meanwhile if you look at um, at where play can be developed, you know, g5, h5, <coughs> pardon me, then, um, uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, why should white be better, actually? You know, it's um, so very, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, quite a significant and important mistake there. And I think uh, wouldn't necessarily be a, an obvious one for, um, you know, for white players, you know, that... Uh, um, that you should really be looking to take back with the d-pawn, you know, concede your grip on the e5 square, but keep a rolling queenside majority. Here it's a little bit late already because, I mean, these knights are not really, shouldn't be, this knight shouldn't be on f3 because it's going to get, uh, you know, hit by e5 to e4. It's much better on b3 where it can go to a5 and help support the, uh, uh, the advance of the queenside pawns. So after b takes c5, ruby went for it with g5. Knight d2, knight takes d2. Queen takes d2, and then f4. Very typical move, this f4. You get ahead of e3, basically. So if now e3, then f3. And, uh, well, notice that you've already got quite a bit of pressure on the on the king side here because, you know, why can't go f3? Because f takes g3 would, uh, would just uh, win a pawn. So, yeah, already pretty dangerous. And that explains what white's next moves are. Bishop b2, knight f6, then knight e5. So really trying to block that b8 um, uh, h2 diagonal, and then white will be able to play moves like f3, you know, to um, uh, to try and keep black out of uh, some key squares there. Notice though how inconvenient this bishop on a6 is, you know, cutting across, hitting the pawn on e2, and stopping white from ever playing e3. So queen g7, rook e1, queen h6, and um, here. I mean, it's actually getting quite crucial for uh, for White. And, uh, well, stock, both Stockfish and Coivisto, 7-9, um, really wanted to play f3, but they were going for a very sharp line here. Takes, takes, knight d7, and then f4. Um, and after queen g7, queen a5. So, I mean, this is really, um, yeah, it's not easy at all to, uh, to understand in actual fact, you know, and it's really all about... Um, uh, um, trying to fight back at the um at the black position and uh, distract black from uh, from all its long term advantages by attacking some some loose spots in the position um but i mean it was pretty dangerous gf4 knight f7 and then this amazing move bishop d3 e takes d3 f3 you know pretty cool and uh i don't think i've ever seen uh, you know a move like that before bishop d3 um e takes d3 f3 and uh, well, Coivisto and Stockfish is white. They managed to, you know, to just keep uh, keep stuff together. But um, pretty clear that Black was doing all the pressing, you know. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Felt quite easy to uh, to make a mistake as um, as white. So um, Winter didn't do this after playing Rook E1, Queen H6, played Rook F1 again. Yeah, not really. Uh, you don't really feel that uh, that uh, this is going to do the biz, really. Um, Rook e8, 
and now uh, g4 um, and this is again very very risky because um, uh, it gives the, the knight a square on e4 and it gives the queen a chance to attack this pawn um, bishop a1 yeah it's not uh, probably I think it's already hard to start giving um, uh, black uh, white some advice here but um, but yeah now it's just really really powerful um, and around here basically from now on all of my engine games ended in wins for black you know it was uh, it's that powerful but I think Ruby finishes it off with some beautiful tactics um, so f3 and f h takes g4 yeah we're just sacrificing the piece here uh, because we got rook h8 and uh, well look how weak h2 is how on earth do you defend that um, so queen d2 um, rook h8 h3 rook ef8 nice uh, calm play from uh, from ruby there notice how useful the bishop on a6 is it's stopping even rook b7 you know there's uh, there's no entry points whatsoever for um for white so bishop d4 played g takes h3 bishop f3 g4 king h1 and now g3 yeah g2 check is uh, very very dangerous here um bishop f2 played uh, a lovely typical engine defense so you're just looking basically after gf you're claiming that uh, the pawns uh, are actually getting a little bit in the way of um, of, uh, of black's attack but ruby switched angle i like these moves very much just uh, switching angle trying to come round through the other side and uh, winter avoided it and now rook b3 and we're getting some pressure on uh, on f3 now um rook g1 rook h6 just making sure that you've got uh, rook g6 if ever you need it in order to um uh, in order to uh, to block stuff um e takes d5 c takes d5 bishop e1 and now an absolutely uh, gorgeous finish from uh, from ruby i mean it's worth uh, stopping the game here and just seeing if you can spot the tactic because again you know we saw a tactic with bishop d3 earlier in the game and uh, this one uh, you know which completely surprised me and this one again i don't think i've seen this one before um so it was rook takes f3 e takes f3 and then this gorgeous moves bishop f1 and the idea is you're just threatening to play a uh, bishop g2 check um and after rook g2 takes takes queen h1 it's just a uh, mate bishop g2 never seen anything like that before um and uh the the um uh, the tactical point is particularly fine because uh um, after rook f1 we go g2 so king g1 we've just got h2 check which is winning and king h2 you might think well you know if i promote to a queen bishop takes queen looks like um looks like white surviving but it's g takes f1 knight ah oh. and then uh, king h1 knight d2 bishop h4 rook h4 there is still a c pawn but uh, we've got rook h8 uh, to c8 and we can also play knight c4 to block the uh, the rook support of the of the pawn as well so simply winning there but um wow you know i mean bishop f1 what a tactic really gorgeous there um and uh um yeah really quite amazing and um uh and in general you know i thought a very nice game you know also with a you know a temporary peace sacrifice i, I think uh, this one probably you know it wasn't that difficult um and uh, by this stage hard to know what else uh, black would do but still very nice judgment and i think you know there was this very important opening moment where um you know white had to decide really you know what am i going to do with a queen side structure and i think that white really took the wrong decision there playing this b takes c5 which is you no know, looks logical looks uh, kind of static you know uh, getting a grip of the dark squares but actually i think proved to uh, to lead white into a position where white had no play and um, well in the stone wall black gets a lot of space you know and uh, if you don't counter that then um, uh, yeah you know there's there's no no way that um, that you're squashing black in any way black you know stands with those pawns on d5 and f5 and uh, yeah i mean what ruby did was pretty classic really g5 then uh, then f4 and just bring more and more pieces into the king side so really lovely game there and uh, and it's also my little apology to uh, ruby because uh, i've uh, featured so many of its losing games it's lost some very attractive games in uh, the tcc swiss but it's also played very very well as well so uh, good to see a great game from ruby and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed this video give me a like or a subscribe if you feel like it and otherwise hopefully see you at the next video